Singh Bhaiya. Everyone knows him, I guess. So those who don't know, he is the co-founder of Dynopy and also Google developer expert in Google Cloud. And to be honest, Bhaiya is my inspiration, <laughs> as he knows already. So without wasting the time, let's start. Bhaiya, you can present now. You are not audible. You go. Cool. Yeah, the, the primary issue of all the online things. So, yes, I am audible now. I hope. Yeah. If you have any complaints, do let me know. I'm looking at the chat. So, otherwise, yeah, I think we are good to go. Uh, I'm trying to find the chat. Okay. Here it is. Awesome. So thanks a lot for having me, Subranil. And uh, GDC TIU is like, yeah, I've been coming to it quite frequently now, I guess. So let's get started with the topic, Gen AI with Google Cloud. I was there in TIU a couple of weeks back. And then I talked about Gen AI as a backend. But obviously, I did not talk about what generative AI in itself is and how you can use it. Right. So. In this particular session, I will try to cover that as well. And we will also try to understand what Gen AI actually is, how it works, and all those things. Right. So let me get started with, uh, yeah, with sharing my screen. I hope this is visible. Yes, this is visible. Awesome. So hi, everyone. Uh, talking Gen AI with Google Cloud today. And uh, for me, I'm Anubhav, co-founder of Dynapy and Google Developer Expert for GCP. Bunch of other things. If you're interested in any of those, let me know. We will talk about it. I'll share my contact details towards the end of this session. So feel free to reach out any day. So why the topic, right? Why are we going to talk about Gen AI with Google Cloud? Because uh, strongly an opinion of my own that in today's day these are the two most important technologies i don't say it's like specifically google cloud which is the most important technology but i will say cloud technologies along with generative ai these are two very important technologies and uh, they are available both on google cloud so we will be talking about how to use it on google cloud today but then whatever i talk about is in general applicable to pretty much the entire concept of uh, both generative AI and Google Cloud, right? And uh, besides that, today itself, I was watching a video of Andrew Young. And this is the sentence which he always uses for AI. So AI is the new electricity, right? And uh, I strongly believe that this is true because generative AI specifically, not just like, uh, you know, the entire AI domain, but then with the advent of generative AI, I think all domains which deal with any kind of science or any kind of work to do. I think they have all felt the shift which has come because of generative AI. There's probably no one in your contacts today, probably in our age who is studying anything, any field at all. Uh, there's literally no one who will tell you that they have not heard about or at least tried once about uh, chat GPT or things like that. Right. So, uh, you know, it has a very strong transformational uh, potential and uh, again, a personal opinion that if you are not using it, uh, if you're thinking that, you know, being in tech, you will be able to skip over the effects of AI or generative AI, then you are probably, you know, going to stay behind uh, those of your peers who take it seriously. Right. So just suggesting that uh, AI is a great domain to explore. And generative AI is probably the easiest way to get started. The learning curve is almost zero. So I think a great uh, opportunity to start uh, in a very new technology. What are we going to do today in the next uh, 30, 40 minutes, which I have? We will be doing these things. First, I'll talk about the concepts. And uh, then we will be talking about the implementation. And at the same time, at the same time, the concepts might feel a bit boring, might go slightly above the head. Um, just hold on because once we come to implementation, we will do fun things and uh, we will have like real live examples, which I have not tried out before. 
so there's obviously a chance of failure and does not everyone want a presenter to fail right so yeah stick in for that right let's come to what is generative ai the whole concept and you are free to read through this but what i'll tell you in short is that generative ai is that category of ai models or let's say an application of ai which tries to mimic the human creation of content right what kind of content can that be that can be text that can be images or that can be audio if you combine all these three you get videos so all types of multimedia or uh, actually text is a part of multimedia so it will uh, come under that but then any kind of content that we create right as humans whatever we create uh, all of that generative ai try to mimic right uh, and then yes that also means it tries to mimic the code that we do and uh, you know some smart people thought that it was a good idea to create a, a machine learning model which could create the code that they were doing and uh, i think this is a existential crisis moment for a lot of coders out there a lot of people who are coming new into development and things like those anyway let's come to see how it works and this is like really important to understand how it works so that you are able to uh understand at base how to modify these things how to make it work better how to make it according you know work according to your requirements and right, so the first type of generative ai model which is kind of the most popular one and has even the word generative in its own name is the generative adversarial networks right or in short gans and uh, you can read about these papers you can read through the sample implementation later you can click those links once i share the deck so don't worry about that but what exactly is a generative ai model how does it work think about uh if you know a neural network right what does a neural network try to do a neural network basically tries to mimic the way the human brain works right and uh, what it has is it has a lot of inputs and it tries to learn the weights which are connected to those inputs so that it can predict a certain output as simple as that right it has some neural layers by which it tries to do that now the good thing with generative like generative adversarial networks is that it does, it has not one but two neural networks right two neural networks try to work together to create a gan what is the whole idea behind having two of them there's one which is the generator the other is a discriminator right what is essentially means is that one of the neural networks tries to recreate whatever it has seen before okay it tries to recreate these images and the discriminator it tries to figure out whether it is real or fake right whether it's a real image or a fake image by fake image it means the generator has generated it think of it like this um think of it like a you know a court kind of setup right in a court what happens there are some statements given by people and then the judge tries to determine whether the statements are true or false and what to do with that like later on right but the first thing is that there are people who say some statements and the judge tries to decide who is telling the truth okay so this is the whole scene and the generator sees a lot of sample images say for example it sees maybe a 1 million images of uh, cats and dogs and it tries to generate the image of a dog the discriminator even it has seen all those 1 million images of cats and dogs but it is trained to classify whether a given image is a dog or something else right so every time the generator generates an image of a dog the discriminator tells it whether it looks like a dog whether it looks real or does it look fake right so this keeps on going in iterations and millions of times this happens eventually the generator learns how to generate good fake images which the discriminator cannot tell whether it is correct or wrong think about you are looking at a dart board on which you are throwing darts right and every time you throw a dart the distance from the center is measured so the first time you throw it is probably at a distance of 30 cm right and the person tells you that hey it is 30 cm far from the center next time you hit it goes to 20 next time you hit it goes to 10 and then finally you learn how to throw it at the center right if you practice well enough it goes at the center this is what happens between the generator and the discriminator the di generator learns the discriminator keeps telling it like how bad your image is right for example instead of a dog it has generated the image of a of a laptop 
right? It's very, very bad. But instead of a dog, if it generates an image of, say, any other four legged uh, animal, say, for example, a cow, right? It's slightly similar because at least it has four legs, right? The same way of uh, the body being uh, uh, parallel to the ground, right? So eventually it will learn how to generate good images of dogs and the discriminator at one point will fail, right? The discriminator will fail at one point. Is there a, is there a strong echo or is it like something which only one person is experiencing? Okay, cool. Uh, Avri, you might want to reason. Yeah, this say the generator gets so good at generating fake images that at one point the discriminator is not able to tell that it's a fake image and the discriminator says that yes this is a real image and that is when our model has learned to generate images of a dog right and this is how a GAN works so the GAN takes a lot of input and between the generator and the discriminator it does many iterations and eventually the generator learns what is the correct parameters to use to generate real images of the dogs right so this is how a GAN works and then a very popular and actually slightly newer uh, generative model is the variational autoencoders, right? Now, variational autoencoders is very interesting. Think about if I give you a camera, that camera can store only one image, right? This is the condition that camera can store only one image. And I tell you that, hey, go and take the pictures of all the vehicles on the road using this camera and you should be able to produce all the pictures later on right this is obviously not possible because there are many types of many different models of vehicles on the road right so what does a variational autoencoder do if your camera was a variational autoencoder what it would do is that when you take the first picture of a car right let's say you took a picture of a car which is a hatchback right it, it does not have an extension at the back so you took a picture of that car and what it has is that there are four wheels in the bottom, then there's a rectangular body, and then there's probably either a rectangle on the top or maybe a curve or something like that. This is what it learns, right? Then you go and take a picture of another car, which is, which is probably a sedan, right? Which has a extension in the back. Now it learns that, okay, there are four wheels. Yes, four wheels are always there. Then the body might be either small or it could be long. And there could be another uh, rectangle on the top or it may not be there. There, might, there are some cars which are just the body. Think about those convertible cars, right? Who have a fake uh, body coming up. So they do not have a body as such. They have only the rectangular body and the four wheels below it, right? When it takes enough pictures of all these different types of vehicles, then it generalizes over them. It creates one generalized image with a distribution of probability of what things may happen where, right? For example, the probability of having four wheels on the bottom is one, right? Which means 100% of the times it saw that there were four wheels at the bottom. We are only talking about four wheelers. We are not talking about autos and all that. But the probability of having a smaller body is probably 50-50. There are like probably half sedans and half hatchbacks. So it's a 50-50 probability of whether that extension will be there or not. But will the rectangular body be there? Yes, it will always be there. Then on the top, will there be extra curving? Will there be a rectangle? There might be a varying probability of this, right? So it stores the probabilities. It stores that one generalized image. Now, when I ask you to generate the images of all the vehicles you saw, all you need to do is that using that one generalized image, you need to apply this probability matrix and you will be able to generate images of hundreds and thousands of cars using just one image, right? So this is what a variational autoencoder does. Uh, it stores the variations of the, of the generalization which it has done, right? Which it has autoencoded it. Whatever data it sees, it autoencodes it and, it and it stores the variation probability. And then finally, a very popular one for text, the recurrent neural networks, which power the whole concept of uh, LSTMs, you might have heard LSTMs somewhere, right? So RNNs power the LSTMs and the whole idea of RNNs is that data, uh, you know, which data is in order, neural networks are not able to maintain that order by default. But in case you have time order data or 
data which is in any order right say for example the data of stock market one hour ago it was something else right now it is something else and how it will move will depend on a lot of uh, calculations based on time or maybe data from a sensor probably a sensor which reads the temperature of a particular room right so this particular data has a lot of significance to time right for example during the afternoon the temperature will be higher during the morning times or maybe at the night maybe at 3 am the temperature will be much lower so if we wanted to create a model which can predict the temperature of a room at a given time we will need to understand what time of the day is it right so all these ordered data require that whatever data the model has already trained on at some point it is brought back into the training right it cannot be that uh, the model just trains from left to right through the entire data set and it is done this will give wrong results so what happens is that in a recurrent neural networks the model keeps training and it keeps bringing back old parameters into the current training step right and that is why it is called recurrent and long short term memory is essentially used a lot for text and it is based on the idea of recurrent neural networks and it tries to uh, learn how to predict text right it tries to understand text because text is one thing in which each character matters right for example there's a huge difference between bed and bad right there's a and and if you just turn around say dog and god there's a huge amount of difference right so you need to maintain that order and lstms are uh, the perfect model for that right so every text based model which you see in today's world they are all based on lstms cool this done let's move to the next part which is what can generative ai do for you right and these are some of the like most popular examples i think uh, i'll take an example from you all right if you have used maybe chat gpt or maybe if you have used google bard just let me know in the chat what you have done with it right if you have tried to create something if you have just asked it for uh, you know leave application likh do i don't want to go to college today so let me know in the chat what have you tried out with the uh, generative ai let me see some use cases from your side chat gpt okay but what have you used it for like what did you do with it what did you ask it resignation letters very nice resignation letters are important i have a example of resignation letter today as well in a different format for some coding purpose okay finding answers during exam very nice generated your resume linux solutions very nice use mid journey to create some pictures very cool code checking that is interesting you checked your code uh you could check your code in the compiler as well but obviously we are not trusting the compiler anymore so yes okay uh, asking assignment questions very nice uh yeah we should take a screenshot of this and probably send it to your uh, professors we are recording this right yes this is being recorded very nice uh finding coding problem solutions very nice research your my resume okay search answers dipanjan this search answers is so generic it's like what answers did you search did you search answers of questions in the assignment or did you search the meaning of life anyway uh assignment and coding purpose exam answers okay this is good as it to generate answers again a very generic answers explain every line of code yeah this is very nice right uh this is actually a good use case explain every line of code you could ask um, in fact at many times even i have done this uh, whenever i've got a system log or maybe a you know error message i've just passed it to chat gpt and say please explain this to me what is happening right and it gives me a good explanation of that this is actually a very good use debug your code uh, okay forming sample questions from different topics very nice forming sample questions okay are you a teacher or something uh, we should be careful points for ppt points for ppt oh yes i have generated a lot of uh, slide shows using chat gpt um, debugging code okay assignment questions very nice uh, subranil is like yes yeah this is a very hard answer it's like what did you use it for yes i have used it like for everything okay okay a lot of answers very nice uh <laughs> exam answers thank you for the clarification dipanjan yeah chat gpt gives idea but not the answer for linux preposes okay uh, i think you are asking it wrong i'll i'll actually show you why you might be asking it wrong um uh, anyway like this is this is good this is good and here are some examples which you know uh, other people are using it for 
uh, people are using it to generate art and music. There's like a bunch of these startups of NFTs, right, which uh, just use generative AI to generate images and then they try to sell it for a very high premium and that is no longer working. So the NFT market has crashed. Uh, anyway, game development. There are people who are trying to generate entire games out of uh, generative AI. So what is happening is that uh, there are games in which you can choose to do whatever you want. You can choose to say whatever you want and the characters respond accordingly. The story changes accordingly. Even the stories, characters, sceneries, and the whole uh, the whole play is actually being generated on the fly. And uh, you are able to play games which have not been coded, which have not been imagined. And you have you are also playing games which are unique to every person who is playing it. Right? I'll I'll show you a demo of this. Let me quickly do that as well. Like, why do I say this is possible? Um, Oops, not here. Just the one. Let me show you a game in which uh, you can do pretty much anything. Right. Uh, let me log in with my account. Okay. Let me. Okay. So imagine, like, uh, for those of you who are probably uh, Harry Potter fans. Right. Imagine that you want to go to Harry Potter and, uh, you know, you want to be a person who is in the Harry Potter world. Right. So here's the game. Uh, welcome to Hogwarts. You are Marcus Pinto, 16 year old, who has just received direct admission to fourth year at Hogwarts. Right. You step into the magical world. Now, what would you like to do? Here's a very open ended question. What would you like to do? Do you want to explore the castle, meet other students, rest? And let me tell you, there is no back end to this game as such. Right. This game is purely generative AI, right? So let me see, let me click on meet other students. Let's see what happens. Uh, yeah, excuse me if the API is slow, not, not my, not my uh, control over that. You enter the great hall where all the students are gathered for breakfast. You see a group of students. What would you like to do, right? So do you want to rest? Do you want to find a seat alone and observe or do you approach a group and introduce yourself? Let us see, let's approach a group and introduce ourselves, right? Uh, just saying all of this is actually happening using generative AI, right? Uh, you confidently walk up, they seem friendly. They ask about your house and interests. What do you do? Uh, tell them about your house or maybe share your interests with them, right? So you could just keep playing this. None of this story is written. No one has coded all of these stories. Uh, it's just happening, right? The way you are choosing things, it just, it just keeps on uh, generating things for you. Right. You could play it for an infinite amount of time and maybe never reach an ending. So this is possible, very much possible. And this is one of the examples, right? How people are using this for gaming. And then obviously there's healthcare. Now healthcare is like a domain, which if you think every time in history, whenever humans have created a good technology or any better technology, it has in some way or the other helped us with, uh, the long longevity of human life, right? Uh, it has helped us with increasing how healthy we can stay, right? So health is a very huge domain for generative AI to impact. And uh, like, I believe there are uh, already there are a number of startups which are working towards that. And very soon you might be seeing um, applications of generative AI in say the smartwatches that we wear and things like those. But then at the same time, generative AI has a lot of implications, right? Uh, there's deep fakes. There's obviously uh, with generative AI, there's like increasing number of ways for people to fake uh, your identity, right? Uh, even like for people like me, it's even more dangerous because we have our voice recorded uh, online many times. We have our faces recorded online many times. And that's like really very much possible for someone to create a video uh, using, you know, my face, my voice, even, uh, which is like wrong, right? You might have seen these, right? Generative AI was used for generating advertisements, which featured Shahrukh Khan, or maybe, uh, there were some who generated, uh, images and videos of, uh, people during elections, they generated of leaders, like political leaders were made to say things which they have never said. 
and uh, there's a huge implication around that right uh, what if tomorrow someone creates a video of uh, you know our prime minister doing things which he should never do right so there's a lot of implications of generative ai just like electricity think about it like that there's always a way of lighting a bulb with electricity and then there's also a users of using electricity in uh, you know probably to kill people to you know in the tasers which police uses right so obviously a very powerful technology very strongly able to impact in a good way and then very strongly able to impact in a bad way you have to choose which way to stay on and personally i believe very soon we'll be having laws around uh, you know what you can do with generative ai what you cannot do with generative ai for example the repository of deep fakes which was first created was taken down by uh, legal authorities and uh, obviously anything which uses generative ai for illegal purposes is very likely to face uh, similar action right so be very mindful when you are using generative ai at least in today's date right now we don't have those laws around we just have like a general understanding of what is good and what is bad so just stick to using generative ai for good okay this said uh, let's come to the implementation part let's see some examples let's see some uh, generative ai in action and uh, the way generative ai is available on gcp is with the uh, gen ai uh, on vertex ai platform or else so make a suit right and uh, yeah generative ai on vertex ai how it is available let me go into that and you could read through this or you could just look at what i'm going to show you now uh, let me share my screen the best thing about online events is that i can share my screen and directly show you uh, stuff on my uh, browser right so yeah let's take benefit of that let me go to the dashboard and uh, let me click here and this is vertex ai on my left so once you go to your google cloud console on the left side you will be able to see vertex ai in case you are not able to see vertex ai i have pinned it uh, it's available at the bottom right so you will need to click here on more and you will need to scroll down and somewhere towards the bottom you will see the whole ai suit right so there is currently vertex ai and the gen app builder so these are the two products within google cloud which are allowing you to use generative ai right within vertex ai not all of it is generative ai what is generative ai this is the generative ai studio right so uh, generative ai studio or maybe you could call it gen ai studio right so let us go to gen ai studio and right now it is offering three types of models language speech and vision where language is for text speech is for text to speech conversions and vision is for text to image and image to text right so uh, let's open the language one because text is by far the most powerful thing and uh, inside it you will have either a text prompt or a code prompt or else you could have a text chat or a code chat this is called a completion right the prompts thing is called a completion why is it called a completion let me show you what essentially a large language model is right not just uh, the one which i'm going to sh uh, show you this model text bison right not just this any large language model the one which you use in chat gpt the one which you use pretty much anywhere they are just good predictors of what comes next right remember this they are only trying to predict what is the most possible next character right and that is why these are all called completion apis right the model that we are going to you use is called text bison and uh, this is just the label provided to the model the whole family of models is called palm 2 right which is pathways la uh, language model and uh, we are going to use just the text bison which is like their mid sized mid sized uh, model available right there's also large size available models i'm not sure if they are shown here yes there's code gecko right gecko is a small animal right that's why it's a small model it will probably not be able to do very powerful things but it can do things quickly whereas uh, the bison one will take some more time now why is it called a completion api let's see what completion means right let me write uh, complete this sentence or maybe if i do not write complete this sentence uh, let's try typing uh, i was eating an apple at an apple store in the apple office 
in let me just leave it here let's see what it predicts right let me let me say submit by the way i have never tested this oh this is this is exactly correct right look at the way it has completed the entire sentence um the apple office in cupertino california apple was delicious blah 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 and uh, you know just just completed the entire thing i just left it midway right uh, what else can we ask it to do we can ask it to do things for us say for example if i say uh uh make a joke with the following sentence right let me try to submit now i'm not sure what the response will be okay i was so hungry i ate the whole apple core and all then i realized i was in apple store and i just eaten an apple that was made by apple i felt like i had just eaten my own head i don't know why it feels it's funny it's not but then it has tried to generate a joke right uh that said there's a couple of settings which you can do in this let's take a look what does a temperature mean temperature means the amount of creativity that your uh, model will try to have in its response if you see here this question mark it will it tells you a like a greater meaning but what it essentially means is that if you put it to zero your model will always have a very deterministic response very sticking to the facts that it has already read but if you put it to one it will try to become creative right it will try to do things which it has probably not uh, explicitly read about right so let's see if i set it to one then it comes up with a much better joke right i realize in the episode i was eating the apple that i was supposed to be selling now this is a much better joke like at least for me yeah right so this is used for generating the amount of creativity in the response and then there's the token limit right how much output will the model generate now the thing with llms is right all the llms which are there in the world they are all charged on the basis of how many tokens you are passing to it and how many tokens it is sending back right because uh remember what i told about how these things work right i said it is predicting the next token right so predicting the next token basically means every character which is given out as an output is being predicted it is a single operation right so if you think about this sentence being completed the rest of all is predicted one character at a time right so essentially the charging should also be on the basis of how many characters are being generated right very simple and that is why uh all the charging of llm the cost of llm comes on per token right and then token limit how many tokens maximum should be generated if you have a smaller number then eventually you will incur less cost in production right if you have a very higher number then you will incur larger cost in production right so just keep it small according to your requirement what is top k right top k essentially means is the number of characters that this particular uh, completion will consider on the next step say for example if i leave it here right if i leave it here and i say predict further right then it can choose any of the 10 characters sorry any of the 10 digits or any of the 26 alphabets or any of the 13 14 or how many number of uh, special characters we have right so how many characters should the model consider for predicting the next character this is the uh, variable which is controlled by top k right so if you set it to 40 it means it is going to choose between 40 different characters now this is going to be more costly right because there are going to be 40 characters it has to choose between them this is obviously going to be more costly so we should reduce it to say 5 right then there will be possibly 5 candidates out of which the next character will be selected right and how does it determine which ones to use using top p what is the probability threshold below which it will not count and above which it will count right so if you set the top p to 1 it will only select the top one character which is most probable 
But if you set it to zero, then it will consider all the possibilities which are defined here, right? If you put it to 40, it will consider all 40. If you set it to, if you set it to say 95, it will consider only the first 95% of the 40 characters which have been selected here, right? So this is how top P works. And then max responses is like, how many responses do you want to generate? What is the number of alternate responses you want to generate here? That's uh, not a model setting. That's more of a output setting, API setting, right? So this said, let's come back to, let's come back to my presentation. And uh, yeah, this is what I showed you just now. And then there's the gen app builder, the gen app builder currently, if you see my slides, it's like, I just mentioned two things, search and recommendations, but uh, recently changed. It now has three things inside it. And let me show you what those are. So this is the gen app builder and gen app builder is currently having uh, search recommendations and I believe chat. Right. So if I click on new app, this is where you will see that same thing. So there's search, there's chat and there's recommendations. Now this is more of an enterprise solution, right? It's probably not something which you will use on a daily basis. Um, you can use it to create search engines and recommendations very quickly outside and out of an existing data source, right? So the data source, which I've created, here, <coughs> sorry. Yeah. The data source, which I've created here is my own website, right? Very simple. I've created a recommendation engine and a, uh, web search engine based on the web available data on my personal portfolio website. Right. So let me check this out. Right. Uh, let's check out first. First of all, let's check out the search engine. Right. If I search for, let's say Python, what is the kind of result I'll get? And it gives me the correct results with like uh, Python web sockets at the very top, because like, this is the most relevant one, right? The first word is Python. And then there's like other titles with Python on them. And then eventually it moves on to content, which has just uh, Python inside the page, not in the title, right? So this is how it goes. But then let us take a look at uh, the recommendation engine as well, right? So if I search for Python, uh, what else will it recommend to me, right? Say, for example, if I search for, uh, okay, this is still not ready. Not sure what happens. Yeah, I'll, I'll probably have to leave it here. They are still not ready with it. Uh, I don't know why, because I created it like way back first August Google's issue anyway. Yeah. So this was the gen app builder. Let's move on to make a suit and palm API, right? I told you it's available in two ways, make a suit and make and the uh, vertex AI. So vertex AI we covered, let's move to make a suit. The palm model itself, the text bison, which you just saw that model is offered as an API through make a suit. Now make a suit is a very interesting thing. Makersuite is probably going to be the first enterprise ready free tool available to people, right? This is what I understand today. I may be wrong. Google might change its strategy in the future, but from the early access, which I have and the, uh, and the conversation, which I've seen Makersuite might be coming out completely free for everyone to use. Uh, and that will be amazing right? because then you can build your products over it. Let me show you what Makersuite looks like. By any chance, does anyone here have access to Makersuit? Let me know in the chat. So this is what Makersuit looks like today. Uh, Makersuit is completely based on Palm API, which essentially means that uh, it is only able to work with text, right? Because Palm API is made for text. And then there's text from data from and chat from these two work on the text Bison model. This works on the chat Bison model. Right. So let's take a look at text prompt and, uh, let me try to create something new. We have already done these samples. I have already done these in TIU, uh, long back. So I'll not recreate them. Let me try to create a new sample. Um, just, just like right now, right. I'll, I'll not use anything from what I've used in the past. So it is giving me a suggestion, right? Uh, categorize an apple as a fruit or vegetable. Uh, do I want to categorize as a write a JavaScript function, explain it to me. Uh, this will be slightly uninteresting paraphrase. It looks like it's about to rain. Um, okay. So let me ask it to, yeah, let me ask it to categorize sentences as true or false, right? Um, determine true or false. 
statement what statement can i give uh, west bengal is in uh, kolkata right uh, and what can i do result right let's see if it uh, correctly runs and since i'm trying to determine facts and facts are supposed to be less creative i reduce the amount of creativity in this model to say zero because this is like i'm just fact checking right so let me run this and let's see if it is able to come out west bengal is in kolkata false that is correct let me check if it works the other way kolkata is in kolkata let's see what it uh, responds for that and that is false again yes kolkata is not inside kolkata it's like kolkata is kolkata right so let me change this kolkata is in west bengal let's see what it tells for this and if it is false then we'll have to worry but it is true right uh, it knows what kolkata is what west bengal is it understands that it is inside west bengal right now let me change this right uh, let let me change this uh, to uh, anything right let me mix the name of uh, suranil uh, gorov and orkopio and uh, sarvani right yeah now whether this is true or false we do not know let us check and it tells us it's true which is essentially correct because all of you are probably in kolkata right now uh, but then yes the model should not know this right this this thing does not exist why is it telling me it's true right uh, this should not happen right and this is model hallucination at the same time i'd like to point out someone told me that they were not able to get uh, the right thing out of the out of what they were trying to ask the model right um, where was that particular complaint i saw it something back uh, 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 yeah i'm not able to find this okay here it is right uh, chat gpt gives idea but not the answer for linux uh, pre let me try to see if i can bring it on the screen can i bring it on the screen yeah i probably cannot bring it to the screen but this was the thing right uh, chat gpt gives idea but not the answers for linux uh, i don't know what purpose this is but i think it's purposes right so i'll tell you how to you know overcome that the idea is that you need to be very explicit in what you are asking your llm model right i have just asked it to determine true or false so based on anything it is just giving me true or false right can anyone guess why is it giving me true by any chance any any guesses of why is it giving me true huh. Okay, why is it giving me true? Can anyone try to guess that? Uh, okay, I'll leave you to uh, you know guess that because we are kind of near the time. It's repeating the previous answer. No, it's not repeating the previous answer. Uh, you have given two options. The creativity is set to zero. Uh, not really. Might be a noun, so it assumes it's an identity, and there is a bias. Could be. Could be. <clears throat> the explanation which i have for this is that these characters you see right uh, these characters you see on the page right if you break it down into say multiple tokens right uh, there's probably few places in west bengal which are similar to these words right if you break them down there's probably some place with you know something something here something here something here right and that is why it uh, tries to say that okay this is correct right it finds minimal probability although it is not correct yes the tonality of the word is also related to bengal and that is why it tries to determine that okay yeah i think this is in west bengal because i have given it only two options either true or false it does not have a option of saying that this does not exist right so let me change my instruction let me change it to uh, determine true or false if the place places exist in real world as per your current training data if they do not exist say not determinable 
although there's a slight chance i'm slightly worried about this particular example that it might not work but let's take a dig at this right and it tells us not determinable because this word does not exist right but if i again change it back to say kolkata and let's say if it uh, is still doing it right it still says not determinable the reason being it does not have access to google maps and that is why it is not able to do so but uh, yeah if if we uh, change this example to one of the old ones which i have used we'll probably have a better answer to this uh, it does not have current training data and it is probably assuming that you know whatever its training data maybe up to 2021 maybe 2022 maybe the world maybe that particular place has ceased to exist or maybe that place has come up in uh, latest times and that is why it is not able to answer this right uh, if i give it a list if i give it a list of places determine true or false of the below statement if the name of the places exists in the list below place names kolkata west bengal uh haryana punjab uh let me consider some other places as well kharagpur right so i have given it a list of names right and now let us see if the result is the same right it is true but if i change this word to something which does not exist this time it should give us false or not determinable right i have not written not determinable here it's just giving us false right so this is how you can control the kind of output your llm provides right you can very much uh, okay this word does not exist but it's okay yeah you can control the kind of output your llm is providing by giving it more explicit instructions right yeah let me come to the next part of this presentation because we slightly less on time now uh but then yes we have covered the good part so let me come back to sharing the screen cool so what is palm api you can read through this later i'll share this with you uh building with generative ai right for those of you who do not have access to maker suit right now you will be able to use maker suit through one of the tools uh, i created if you want you can just go to lama studio dot dev and you will be able to find uh you will be able to create prompt to apis which you can use then to create uh, anything which uh, you can do with maker suit as well right is just a wrapper over maker suit is essentially just maker suit and then there are some resources which you can uh, click and read once i share with you this presentation and let me show you a couple of examples which i have created using uh, just lama studio right uh, i created them just two days back slash lama studio examples oh something is wrong it's yes, there we go right so here are some examples of things which have been created using generative ai so obviously leave application is something which we all love and that is why the moment i enter this page this particular page makes a request to maker suit and maker suit gives out a response like this right so dear boss name feel like i'm constantly being micromanaged having to listen to my boss endless lectures uh, all of these things it has a rare condition called bossitis right i have it as the copy of my doctor's note for your records right so this is a leave application now if i refresh this page it will give me a new one right and this is what uh, yeah if you see like it has come up with a new one and i have not written anything on this page it is just generating content for me every time now if i wanted to create a website which uh, you know has say information about pets then i don't need to write about pets i don't need to research about pets i don't need to do anything i just need to give it an instruction of hey you know um write about pets so this is what pets benefits choosing the right pet caring for your pet and all of this right if i wanted to create a whole website about pets i could very much easily do that right think about this alien pets so let's see what it comes out with alien pets obviously alien pets do not exist but it will try to come out with uh, some some sort of answer for that right it has given me links this time let me see what it can give me the next time probably it will give me some text uh, hopefully 
right so this time it has given me a whole lot of text right and entire websites can be created just using generative ai uh, just using uh, you know generative ai apis so this is a delhi to mumbai trip for seven nights which i have uh, asked it to create so i have uh, created a website on which you can very quickly check for trip between any two destinations right so if i say if i want to do a trip between say bangalore to kolkata and duration of my trip is say 5 days then it will give me a whole itinerary around uh, you know how to do that trip what can you do on those trips right and uh, which day you do what uh, i don't know which flight it is flying on which is going in like 1 hour and 15 minutes this is wrong this is like to us obviously it does not have that information so visit the victoria memorial have a dinner at a local restaurant indian museum and things like those right uh, uh, yeah this is again wrong links to some of the places right? so this is what you can do with generative ai right none of this content is mine none of this content is uh, like i have coded it or maybe i have a database none of it right let me show you the code for this particular repository um, it's actually a public repository if you want to you know see how these examples have been created uh, so here's the trips page and uh, this is the whole code right it's just this much this is the amount of javascript it has which is being used to create that particular content right and then the website uh, pets and alien pets right if you see this uh, i've only changed this data input pets and between this alien pets thing right just the data input pets thing changes uh, this in here i have input imagine alien pets from out of this world right just the input has changed nothing else even the api is same right and similarly for routes so delhi to mumbai i have not written anything about delhi to mumbai i just told it input delhi to mumbai 7 days so this is how easy it is to create content full websites today using generative ai using maker suite and things like these um so yes coming back to the presentation one final part thank you uh for listening to me this long if you have questions feel free to put them in the chat feel free to put them in the uh q&a section right? there's also a q&a section probably visible to you uh, on the bottom you could also put it on the chat i'll answer there as well does not uh, matter and before i go on to answering the q&a uh one last part is like if you want to get connected with me you could get connected with me on any of these platforms uh pretty much all is good i'm also very active on telegram the same username works everywhere and uh, yeah that is about it you can get this deck by scanning this qr code and uh, you could also open this url at the top so whichever you want to do i'll also share the link of this deck with the uh, subrenil so he can share the same with you later on right and uh, yeah let me go back yeah this is the deck and uh, this is it this is the last slide so thank you everyone and now let me take a look at the questions yeah is there any question if you if you think i'm missing your question then you can you know repeat it again at the bottom um yeah okay let me quickly react to this yes how can we generate images yeah you can very easily generate images within google cloud there's a as i showed you right on vertex ai there was also a place for vision in vision you can come in and you can just give it a prompt for uh, let's say flying cat or let let me let me make this much more interesting uh, maybe a cat uh, jumping on victoria memorial in kolkata right so let me see what it comes up with i have not tried this before yeah i don't know why it thinks this is victoria memorial but it has tried to make a cat jump so that is important right uh, maybe yeah this this is definitely not victoria memorial it looks more like india gate or something if i if i give it uh, india gate maybe it would give me a better response because it probably has got more images of india gate uh then kolkata uh in the general public domain it's likely possible that india gate has more pictures right uh so this is like 
लाल किला दिस इज इंडिया गेट यस इट हैज गॉट इंडिया गेट इट हैज गॉट इंडिया गेट करेक्ट फाइनली सो आई एम गेटिंग अ कॉल लेट मी आई आई हैव टू टेक दिस कॉल गिव मी अ मिनट स्टॉप वीडियो yes i'm back so sorry for the interruption uh, this has actually got two images of india gate correct right so the more you have images of in the public domain you will get better results right so anyway uh, this is how you can generate uh, images how generative ai is different from other ai other ai is uh, more focused towards uh, predicting uh, singular use cases right as in say for example there is a maybe there is a neural network which predicts if a given image is a dog or not right so that is just ai that is not generative ai but if you have a model which you tell create an image of a dog that is generative ai right generative ai is focused towards creating for focused towards predicting in such a manner that things are being created okay so this is the major idea behind generative ai being different from other ai okay how an ai model is trained ai model training is actually very simple think about you will have some data which is your input and uh, some data which has to be your output in some cases you might not have an output right there are different kind of ai models maybe some of them try to predict a value some of them try to do categorization clustering uh, things like those so it's a whole it's a whole like different topic of conversation one which i have taken like 3 4 hour long sessions on but the whole idea is that there's input data which is used for training to predict something it could be a class it could be a value or uh, it could be something else it tries to predict that and it tries to learn the connection between the input and the output right how classical algorithms work is that you have the input you are given the algorithm and using that you produce the output this is classical algorithms right if else wale jitne programming hoti hai it is all that right you have the input you have the logic and the output is produced what ai model does is that you have the input you have the output learn the logic right so this is how we essentially look at ai models major drawback of generative ai i think the biggest drawback of generative ai is that uh, it can produce content which can get you in legal trouble right so i think this is something which you need to be very very careful about uh let's say if you saw that example of alien pets right uh, in that example of alien pets what if it were to come out with the uh illegal content right so i would get in trouble because that's a website hosted on my domain right? and uh, it's a risk which i have taken by hosting it on my website in a way that uh, every time anyone visits it new content is generated what if it is starting to generate content about drugs or maybe content which is like uh, inflammatory so i would get in like real real trouble so i think that is one of the biggest drawbacks to stop that there are many methods and you could use any of them uh why the cat is there in every image because we have a cat like the prompt is a cat jumping on india gate right and we have asked it to create uh, four results out of that if we had asked it to create just one then it would create just one right let me see if i reduce this to one and then i ask it to generate then there will be only one image and you will have just one cat jumping over one india gate uh, it's not even jumping over now it's like jumping below india gate anyway that's not my concern uh, what is a neural network that's a whole lot of discussion a neural network is a class uh, is a type of is a whole class of uh, ai algorithm which uh, tries to mimic the way the brain neural system works right there are synapses there are uh, nodes so that is what a neural network is can you give an example of where gans and we are used just like you told us about lstms so variational auto encoders are used for images a lot 
and GANs are again used a lot for images, but then GANs are also used for, uh, uh, let's say, if I, yeah, if I give you an image, which is like if I erase some parts of it, then a GAN will be able to generate the rest of the image. Uh, variational autoencoder will not be the rest, like not be the perfect model to use for that. Variational autoencoder is great for generalized images being converted to real images, but a GAN can generate the rest of the part as well. Explain a bit about API. That is out of context. Uh, this is not about API. Uh, generate alien pets in blue color. No, I will not do that. Uh, how is Gen AI in games different from existential procedural generation? Uh, yeah. So existing game technologies, which I believe what you mean by procedural generation, uh, but since you have told it in the context of game, I'll try to say what I understand from your question. I'm not in no manner. I'm not a gaming expert or game development expert, but what I understand uh, from whatever limited game development, which I've tried is that in procedural generation, what you do is that you have probably, uh, you know, certain elements, which have, which you have put in your, uh, in your code base itself, right? Say for example, trees. So you have created a PNG of different type of trees. You have put them in a folder of trees inside your code. Then you have put uh, maybe some logic to randomly generate paths, right? And then once you start walking in that particular direction, it is going to randomly generate the paths and put trees beside it, right? So this is what uh, procedural generation is. Like the last time I tried gaming, this is probably what I did, right? But for generative AI, what will happen is that, let's say you are walking and all of a sudden you are like, you know, just while you're walking, all of a sudden you see a, maybe a river or, you know, once you go inside the river, it probably converts into an ocean or things like this. Just, just go wild with what could be possible. Right. But if you have not created those oceans and rivers and all those things, and you have not put it inside your code, then you will not be able to do this with uh, procedural generation for generative AI. It is possible. Anyway, guys, uh, we are like way above time. So I will try to drop off now. My voice is even getting strained. So rest of the questions, you can definitely send it to me on any of the platforms. Uh, am I accepting contributions to Lama Studio? Not right now, but I think I will be doing it very soon, right? I probably will make it open source and uh, we can all then contribute to Lama Studio and make it better. Yeah, so this is all from my side. Thank you, everyone. And uh, I'll give it back to Subranil. Thank you, Bhaya. Thank you for the session. And one more thing I want to discuss that don't use your registered account, which you have used in cloud stratagems to explore the GCP platform now. Because that might be cancel your registration part. So don't try it now. After 3rd October, you will get the access. Then try everything you will get. Till then, don't use it. OK, then let's end this here. Can I? OK. OK, thank you, everyone, for joining. See you in next session. And till then. Bye, take care and good night.